In the assignment, we asked you to look as individuals were arriving over a period of one hour, and you were asked to record two sets of data. In the first set, you had to record the number of individuals arriving per minute. So you should have 60 observations there. And then secondly, also capture the time between arrival measured in seconds between consecutive individuals. So in this video, we're just going to demonstrate and use those two sets of data since they come from the same random process to just explain the relationship between the Poisson distribution and the exponential distribution. I highly recommend that if you have not yet looked at those videos that you do that first. Uh, and we've posted links to the assignment and the assignment video for you to go and have a look at. So in R, I'm going to create a new script. And I like just giving myself a little heading of what the script file is going to do. And I'm saving this as comparing distributions. I like cleaning my workspace as a first step and then also calling read our library. Now the data that I've captured looks something like this. There are two files. The first one, which is the counts, looks at the number of arrivals per minute. So there are 60 observations. The first column indicates the minute for which the observation is relevant. And then the second column is the number of the observations. So in the first minute, there were six individuals according to my counts, and then four in the second minute, three in the third, six in the fourth, etc. And in my second file, which I called Poisson underscore TBA, the first column is just an observation number, and the second one is the number of seconds for that specific observation. So between the first and the second individual, I counted 19 seconds, and then between the second and the third, six seconds, and then 13, and then seven seconds, etc. So those are the two files, which I'm now going to read in, in R. So I'm first going to look at the Poisson distribution, which is the discrete distribution and counting the number of events per time unit. So the event in this case is uh, the arrival of people and the time unit is minute. So I'm going to call this counts and read in my file. And I typically store my files so that all the data files are together, all the graphic files are together in a folder and all my R scripts is together. So relative to where I am, the file is one level up in my data folder and it is called Poisson Counts. And I know what the column types are. The first one is an integer and the second one is an integer as well. Because we deal with the Poisson distribution, we are counting exact and discrete number of individuals. So let me just put this on the same line. It doesn't have to be on a separate line. Just conserve some space. Right, so <clears throat> let me run all of this. There you go. You can see that I've got 60 observations of two variables and I can just call a quick summary and see that the minimum number of people arriving in a minute was one per minute and the maximum was 10 individuals per minute and the mean was 4.317. Now, it is possible for me to just draw a histogram of those observations, and I get something that is not the most pretty of distributions, and it's simply because I'm only dealing with 60 observations. That's all I have. I've been sitting around watching people arriving, and in an entire hour, I only got 60 observations. So it, we get the idea of a Poisson distribution, but it's not all that clear. What we do know is that the lambda for the Poisson distribution is nothing other than the mean of those number of observations. Right. 
So the lambda for my Poisson distribution, my rate parameter is 4.317. So that's the one data set. Now we've estimated the distribution. Now let's have a look at the time between arrivals. Again, I know the column types. The first one is an integer. It's just my observation number. And the second one is actually an integer as well, but it need not be. So I'm just going to read it in as a numeric value. I, I ra rounded the number of seconds between consecutive arrivals um, to the closest integer, but that does not necessarily have to be the case. It depends on how accurate you can actually measure your arrivals. So there too, I see that I've got a lot more observations. I've got two variables. So I can call a summary of the time between arrivals. And here I see that the minimum time between arrivals was zero seconds, which means they were, I at least found instances where people arrived at exactly the same time. The mean was 13.9 and the maximum was just over a minute, 65 seconds. Now what is important to note here is that our time between arrivals is measured in seconds. So if we want to compare the exponential distribution and the Poisson distribution, we have to make sure that the time units are exactly the same. So I'm going to change or add another column to my TBA data, my time between arrival data, and I'm just going to transform the seconds into minutes. So I'm not manipulating the data, I'm simply taking the time between arrivals in seconds and divide by 60, and that should give me a column of data that now reflects the time between arrival in minutes. So I think we had 19 seconds and 19 seconds relate to 0 0.3167 minutes. What we can do is draw the histogram of the time between arrivals and we can use either one, it doesn't really matter. But then we can actually have a look at our time between arrivals. And here we see that indeed it looks like an exponential distribution and it does follow an exponential distribution. So we're looking at the random process from two points of view. If we look at the number of arrivals per minute, per time unit, we get a Poisson distribution. And when we look at the time between arrivals and we look at the frequency diagram, we get an exponential distribution. But are they the same distributions? Well, clearly they are not, but do they have the same parameter? And we know from an exponential distribution that the rate parameter is calculated as one divided over the mean, or the mean is one divided over the rate parameter. So I'm going to calculate lambda dot exponential for the exponential distribution and take one divided by the mean of my time between arrivals but now I'm using my minutes because I need to use the same time unit if I want to compare apples with apples. And now if I can just expand a little bit here, you'll see that the two lambda values that I have, one for the exponential distribution and the one for the Poisson distribution is exactly the same. So we've got two ways of describing the process using this rate parameter. I would typically in practice use the exponential distribution to describe the, the arrivals or the time between arrivals simply because I have about four times more observations. So my chances of getting a good distribution is a lot better than having only 60 observations for the Poisson distribution. So there you have it. It's two distributions. That's why we kind of call them cousins or related to one another, because they explain a random process 
just from two different perspectives. But it's important that you understand that the one is discrete and the other one is continuous. And that depending on how you gather your data, you will have to use a specific distribution in order to estimate your rate parameter properly.